Hi guys, welcome back to the Fun Smith. And yes, I am Mohammed Nihar, studying in class 10th at Chimia Vidyalaya Kasaragod. And today we are here to pay a tribute to one of our greatest mind, one of the greatest scientists, one of the greatest presidents, and above all, one of the greatest man India has ever witnessed. He had a huge impact on this country. We students, we youths, we Indians paid a great respect for this person. And and on this day he passed away so it's our duty as an Indian citizen to know more about this person so let's get started on this video Awil Fakir Jal Abuddin Abdul Kalam was born on 15th October 1931 to a Tamil family Muslim family in the pilgrimage center of Rameshwaram on Pamban Island then in the Madras resident presidency and now in the state of Tamil Nadu his father, Jain Labuddin, was a boat owner and imam of a local mosque. His mother, Ashyama, was a housewife. His father owned a ferry that took Hindu pilgrims back and forth between Rameshwaram and the now uninhabited Benushkwadi. Kalam was the youngest of four brothers and one sister in his family. His ancestors had been wealthy traders and landowners with numerous properties and large tracts of land. Their business had involved trading groceries between the mainland and the island and to and from Sri Lanka, as well as ferrying pilgrims between the mainland and Pambam. As a result, the family acquired the title of Mara Kalam Iyakyavar, which means wooden boat steerers, which over the year became shorter to Marakyar. With the opening of Pambam Bridge to the mainland in 1914, however, the business failed and the family fortune and properties were lost over time. Apart from the ancestral home, by his early childhood, Kalam family had become at an early age he sold newspaper to supplement his family's income. Now that's a real pressure. In his school years, Kalam had average grades but was described as a bright and hard-working student who had a strong desire to learn. He spent hours on studies especially mathematics. After completing his education at the Swartz Higher Secondary School, Ramanathapuram, Kalam went on to attend St. Joseph College, Thiruchirappalli, then affiliated with the University of Madras, from where he graduated in physics in 1954. He moved to Madras in 1955 to study aerospace engineering in Madras Institute of Technology. While Kalam was working on a senior class project, the teen was dissatisfied with his lack of progress and threatened to revoke his scholarship unless the project was finished within the next three days. Kalam met the deadline, impressing the dean who later said to him, I was putting you under stress and asking you to meet a difficult deadline. He narrowly missed achieving his dream of becoming a fighter pilot. As he placed ninth in qualifiers and only eight positions were available in the IAF so sad it was just a close miss so let's move on to his career as a scientist after graduating from madras institute of technology after graduating from the madras institute of technology in 1960 kalam joined the aeronautical development establishment of the defense research and development organization which is also known as trdo as a scientist he started his career by designing a small hovercraft, but remained unconvinced by his choice of a job at DRDO. Kalam was also part of the INCO INCOSPAR committee working under Vikram Salabar, the renowned space scientist. In 1969, Kalam was transferred to the Indian Space Research Organization, which is now known as ISRO, where he was the project director of India's first satellite launch vehicle, SLV-3 which successfully deployed the Rohini satellite in near-Earth orbit in July 1980. Kalam had first started work on an expandable rocket project independently at DRDO in 1965. In 1969, Kalam received the government's approval and expanded the program to include more engineers. In 1963 to 1964, he visited NASA's Langley Research Center in Hampton, Virginia. Got a space flight center in Greenbelt, Maryland, and Wallops Flight Facility. Between the 1970s and 1990s, Kalam made an effort to develop the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle PSLV and SLV-3 projects, both of which proved to be successful. 
now that is what i call hard work and dedication because this person from that small family reached to such great position in his job in his career he achieved his dream so let's move on and see what happens kalam was invited by raja ramana to witness the country's first nuclear test smiling buddha as a representative of tbrl even though he had not participated in its development in the 1970s kalam also directed two projects project devil and project valiant which saw to develop ballistic missiles from the technology of the successful slv program despite the disapproval of the unique cabinet prime minister indira gandhi allotted secret funds for the aerospace projects through a discretionary power under kalam's dictatorship directorship kalam played an integral role convincing the union cabinet to conceal the true nature of these classified aerospace projects his research and educational leadership brought him great laurels and prestige in the 1980s which prompted the government to initiate an advanced missile program under his directorship Kalam and Dr. V. S. Arunachalam, metallurgist and scientific advisor to the Defence Minister, worked on the suggestion by then Defence Minister R. Venkataraman on a proposal for simultaneous development of a cure of missiles instead of taking planned missiles one after another. R. Venkataraman was instrumented in getting the cabinet approval for allocating 3.88 billion for the mission named Integrated Guided Missile Development Program. and appointed Kalam as the chief executive. Kalam played a major role for part in developing many missiles under the mission including Agni, an intermediate range ballistic missile and Prithvi, a tactical surface to surface missile. Both of the project have been criticized for mismanagement and cost and time overruns. Kalam served as the chief scientific advisor to the prime minister and secretary of the Defence Research and Development Organisation or the DRDO from July 1992 to December 1999 the Pokhran 2 nuclear tests were conducted during this period in which he played an intensive political and technological role yeah that's true because um there was a movie released f- but based on this story Pokhran and it's one of the best m- movie based on truth or the real life or the true story which i have ever seen so let's continue kalam served as chief project coordinator along with rajagopal chida madam during the testing phase media coverage of kalam during this period meeting the country's best known nuclear scientist yeah this is why i told that he was one of the greatest scientists india has ever seen however the director of the site test k santanam said that the thermonuclear bomb had been a fizzle and criticized kalam for issuing an incorrect report both kalam and chidambar dismissed the claims in 1998 along with cardiology somaraju kalam developed a low cost coronary stent named the kalam raju stent in 2012 the duo designed a rock tablet computer for healthcare in rural areas which was named the kalam raju tablet see he is a great man he has such knowledge that he is now loved by all the people if he hadn't pursued his dreams or his ambition then he wouldn't have reached at this level so um, from this we can understand that we should pursue our dreams we should run behind our dreams and get that done not just dream about it but work hard to get that dreams done so uh, let's move next and see what his role as president is served as the 11th president of india succeeding in kr narayanam he won the 2002 presidential election with an electoral vote of 9922884 surpassing the 173366 votes won by lakshmi sahgal his term lasted from 25th july 2002 to 25th july 2007 On 10 June 2002, the National Democratic Alliance (NDA), which was in power at the time, expressed that they would nominate Kalam for the post of president, and both the Sam- Samajwadi Party and Nationalist Congress Party backed his candidacy. After the Samajwadi Party announced its support for Kalam, Narayanan chose not to seek a second term in office, leaving the field clear. Kalam said of the announcement of his candidacy. 
I am really overwhelmed everywhere, both in internet and in other media. I have been asked for a message. I was thinking what message I can give to the people of the country at this juncture. See, he is such a humble person. This is what we Indians love about this great man. On 18 June, Kalam filled his nomination papers in the Indian Parliament accompanied by Vijay Vajpayee and his senior cabinet colleagues. The polling for the presidential election began on 15th July 2002 in Parliament and State Assemblies. With the media claiming that the election was a one-sided affair and Kalam's victory was a foregone conclusion, the count was held on 18 July. Kalam became the 11th President of the Republic of India in an easy victory and moved into the Rashtrapati Bhavan after he was sworn in on 25th July. See, this proves that Indians love A.P. Abdul Kalam. So let's move on. Kalam was, was the third President of India to have been honored with the Bharat Ratna in India's highest civilian honor before becoming the President. Dr. Sarvapali Radhakrishnan in 1954 and Dr. Zakir Hussain in 1963 were the early recipients of Bharat Ratna who later became the Presidents of India. He was also the first scientist and first ambassador to occupy Rashtrapati Bhavan. During his term as President, he was affectionately known as the People's President. See, such man. Saying that the signing the Office of Profit Bill was the toughest decision he had taken during his tenure. Kalam was criticized for his inaction in deciding the fate of 20 out of the 21 mercy petitions submitted him during his tenure. Article 72 of the Constitution of India empowers the President of India to grant pardons and suspend or to commute the death sentence of convicts of death row. Kalam acted on only one mercy plea in his five year tenure as President, rejecting the plea of rapist Dhanajoy Chatterjee. Who was later hanged. Perhaps the most notable plea was from Abzal Guru, a Kashmiri terrorist who was convicted of conspiracy in the December 2001 attack on the Indian Parliament and was sentenced to death by the Supreme Court of India in 2004. While the sentence was scheduled to be carried out on 20th October 2006, pending action on his mercy plea resulted in him remaining on death row. He also took the controversial decision to impose President's rule in Bihar. In 2005. In 2003, in an in interactive session in PGI Chandigarh, uh, Kalam supported the need of uniform civil court in India, keeping in view the population of the country. On the end of the, his term, on 20 June 2007, Kalam expressed his willingness to consider a second term in his office, provided there was certainly about his victory in the 2007 presidential election. However, two days later, he decided not to contest the presidential election again, stating that he wanted to avoid involving Rashtrapati Bhavan from any political process. He did not have the support of the left parties, Shiv Sena and UPA constituents to receive a renewed mandate. Near the, nearing the expiry date of the term of the 12th President Pratibha Patel on 24th July 2012, media reports in April claimed that Kalam was likely to be nominated for a second term. After the reports, social networking site witnessed a number of people supporting his candidature. The BGP potentially backed this nomination, saying that the party would lend their support if the Trinamool Congress, Samzawadi Party and Indian National Congress proposed him for the 2012 presidential election. A month ahead of the election, Mulayam Singh Yadav and Mamada Banerjee also expressed their support for Kalam. Days afterwards, Mulayam Singh had the back door, leaving Mamada Banerjee as a solitary supporter. On 18 June 2012, Kalam declined to contest the 2012 presidential poll. He said of his decision not to do so was, he said this, Many, many citizens have also expressed the same wish. It only reflects their love and affection for me and aspiration of the people. I am really overwhelmed by this support. This being the wish I respected, I want to thank them for the trust they have in me. He doesn't want to be the president because um, he is, you know, many people are conspiring about him, against him. So he doesn't like that. So he doesn't. He is not a great um, politician, if I may say so, because he doesn't support any one particular party that creates a lot of trouble for another person, other people, or other parties. So he just declined that, 
and he left the president's post so let's see what happens after he loses his presidency post or after he finishes his years as a president we can resume our journey after leaving office kalyan became a visiting professor at the indian institute of management shillong the indian institute of management ahmedabad and the indian institute of management indore and honorary fellow of indian institute of science bangalore chancellor of the indian institute of space science and technology tiruvannapuram professor of aerospace engineering at anna university and an adjunct at many other academic and research institutions across india he taught information technology at the international institute of information technology hyderabad and technology at banaras hindu university and anna university in may 2012 kalambas launched a program for the youth of india called the what can i give moment with a central theme of defeating corruption in 2012 kalam was criticized by civil group over his stand on the kudan kulam nuclear power plant he supported the establishment of the nuclear power plant and was accused of not speaking with the local people the protesters were hostile to his visit as they saw him as a pro nuclear scientist and were unimpressed by the assurances he provided regarding safety features of the plant now that's unfair because it's his right in by which he should you know explain his views or tell people what he knows about the plant so um, let's continue his journey 27th July 2015 Kalam traveled to Shillong to deliver a lecture on creating a livable planet earth and in the Indian Institute of Management Shillong while climbing a flight of stairs he experienced some discomfort but was able to enter the auditorium after a brief rest at around 6:35 p.m. EST only 5 minutes into his lecture he collapsed he was rushed to the nearby Bethany Hospital in critical condition upon arrival he lacked a pulse or any other sign of life despite despite being placed in the intensive care unit of the icu kana was confirmed dead of a sudden cardiac arrest his last words to his aide srijan pal singh were reportedly funny guy are you doing well following his death kalam's body was lifted in indian air force helicopter from shillong to guwahati from where it was flown to new delhi on the morning of 28 july in an air force c 130j hercules so um indians were so shocked stunned by this particular news about the death of one of the billard person of india and the billard president and the billard scientist one of the honored scientists india has ever seen so Now there is a memorial to the Dr A P J Abdul Kalam National Memorial was built in memory of Kalam by the DRDO in Karambu in the island town of Rameshwaram Tamil Nadu it was inaugurated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi in July 2017 on display and the replicas of rockets and missiles which Kalam had worked with acrylic paintings about his life are also displayed among with hundreds of portraits depicting the life of the mass leader There's a statue of Kalam in the entrance showing him playing the veena and other two on small statues of the leader sitting in a standing posture. Kalam now we if we're talking about Kalam's personal life Kalam was the youngest of five siblings which we have already talked about the eldest of whom was a sister Asim Zohra followed by three elder brothers Muhammad Mutamira Labai Marikayar Mustafa Kalam and Qasim Muhammad He was extremely close to his elder siblings and their extended families throughout his life and would regularly send small sums of money to his older relations. His self remaining a lifelong bachelor, Kalam was noted for for his integrity and his simple lifestyle. He never owned a television and was in the habit of rising at 6:30 or 7:00 a.m. and sleeping by 2:00 a.m. His few personal possessions including his books, his vinyl and some articles of clothing A CD player and a laptop at his death. He left no will, and his possession went to his eldest brother, who survived him. So, this is the life story of um, Dr. A. P. J. Abdul Kalam, one of the greatest. And I still can't stop saying that because he is one of them. He's one of the greatest minds India has ever witnessed. Rest in peace, sir. So, 
um, I am talking about um, he was also a great motivational speaker he was a great inspirational person so um, it's I think it's time all the people here and know more about Dr. A.P. Jabdul Kalam so um, we let's watch some of the A.P. Jabdul Kalam's motivation videos but first let's see what it was Abdul Kalam's the last video ever by APJ Abdul Kalam or the last speech ever to be said by Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. It's really very sad to watch that. I'm assuring you it's very sad to watch that but still let's watch. I mean you again said this is all of you who are assembled here all of you remember this incident 1979 1979, SLV-3 satellite launch vehicle, I was the project director, mission director. My mission is to put the satellite in the orbit. Thousands of people worked nearly 10 years. I have reached the, I reached the Sri Eri quota and it's in the launch pad. Countdown was going on. T minus 4 minutes, T minus 5 minutes, T minus 1. One minute, T minus 40 seconds. Computer put a hold. Don't launch it. Computer says, don't launch it. I am the mission director. I have to take decision. Everything is on. Behind me, there are six experts. They saw data, computer database coming in and screen. And they see the pictures in the screen. They said there's a problem. The problem is there's a leakage in the system, in the control system. But Immediate calculus, no problem. We have got sufficient fuel and oxidation for control. Control system is control the rocket to the required attitude. And uh, we can go ahead. Now, of course, my experts view, but I took a uh, decision. Problems mine. I finally I took a decision. I bypassed the computer, I launched the system. Okay, I launched the space follow bench. First stage work is a four-stage rocket. And second stage got mad. It went to spin. Instead of putting the satellite in the orbit, it put in the bay of the moon. 1979, it was a failure. It was a failure first time. I experienced my failure. How do you manage the failure? Success I can manage. So at that time, we have a great man, we have a great leader, Professor Satish Dhawan. He comes to me, I am very tired working nearly for months. He wakes me up, come, let us go for a press conference. Press was meeting there, like this, number of people, world press. We photo this and that, all the gadgets, they are there. I was highly frightened, I will be the culprit. <laughs> because I am the project director, mission director. What Satish Dhawan said, chairman of Indian Space Research Authority said, Dear friends, we have failed today. This is the first time I have to do all the success, all the failure is uh, I want to support my technologists and scientists and staff so that next year they succeed. So he took the whole day piece of And uh, then media asked, you put the way of Bengal so many crores. We are putting like that, a lot of criticism. He received the criticism. He assured them in a year we will succeed with our team. It's a very good team. Next year, here only interesting happened. Next year, July 18, 1980, when he succeeded, Professor Dhawan said, you go and conduct the press conference. Do you follow what this means? It means when the failure occurred, the leader took it up. When the success came, he used his team. I want the young people to understand how to manage the failure. If you want to be innovators, I am going to give you what type of what type of characteristic you must have. See, I have a feeling whenever I do something, I feel happy. You? You want to be you? Yes. Not everybody else. By breaking their limits of their imagination, they change, they change the world. Creativity leads to thinking. When he enters the classroom, my teacher, I see radiation of purity of life. 
leader should work with the integrity and succeed with integrity. Sir, so how did you become so great? <laughs> how did I become so great? That's a question. I learned, what did I learn from the youth of 11 million people? I learned, every youth wants to be unique. Every youth wants to be unique. That is you. Every youth wants to be unique. That is you. But the world around, uh, around you is doing its best day and night to make you just everybody else. Now, now, the question is whether you want to be you or everybody else. You? You want to be you? Yes. Not everybody else. Now, if the question being like everybody else is convenient at the first glance but not satisfying in the long vision. The challenge therefore, my young friends, is that you have to fight the hardest battle. You have to fight the hardest battle which any human being can ever imagine to fight and never stop fighting until you arrive at your destined place. That is the unique you. If you want to be discoverers, if you want to be innovators, I am going to give you what type of, what type of characteristic you must have. Invention and discoveries have emanated from creative minds that have been constantly working and imagining the outcome, the telephone, he was imagining the outcome, imagining the outcome in the mind. With imaging and constant effort, all the forces of the universe work for that inspired mind, thereby leading to invention discoveries. See, I have a feeling, whenever I give something, I feel happy. You see, this is you try, that uh, whatever you may have knowledge, you have sometimes better economy you may have, better, better because sometimes you have a kind words you can have. So if you use and make somebody's life happy, that is you are giving and his or her life is uh, happy, that's a better, better, best thing a human being can think of. The, that, then you will get a conflict-free world. History has proven, history has proven that those who dare to imagine the impossible are the ones who break all the human limitations. In every field of human endeavor, whether science, medicine, sports, arts or technology, the names of the people, just now I listed some of the names, the names of the people who imagine the impossible are engraved in our history. By breaking the limits of their imagination, by breaking their limits of their imagination, they change, they change the world. You take C.V. Raman, you take uh, Newton, you take uh, Einstein, you take Chandrasekhar. They, by breaking the limits of their imag imagination, they change the world. Uh, learning, learning gives creativity. Creativity leads to thinking. Thinking provides knowledge. Knowledge makes you great. Sir, how did you become so great? <laughs> how did I become so great? That's a question. Well, which class you are sitting? Fourth. What's your dream in life? I want to become a singer. Singer? Is this Tony or Carnatic? Is this Tony or Carnatic music? Any music? Yeah, any music. Any music. Well, I don't know how because I don't know. It's a, you know, it's a relative terms. So I personally believe you must have a dream. Say, you must. Have, I must have a dream. I must have a dream. I must continuously acquire knowledge. Continuously acquire knowledge. I must continuously acquire knowledge. Hard work. Hard work. Hard work. And perseverance. And perseverance.
One should not be af- uh, one, not afraid of problems. Not afraid of problems. Then you will be successful, okay? <laughs> you have many accomplishments. You've written books. You've served as president. You're an aerospace engineer. You've been a professor. But you say the title you like best is the title of teacher. Why is that? You know, I had, I had a teacher when I was a young boy, 10 years boy, wartime, the Second World War going on. At that time, I used to see in my class, fifth class teacher, in science teacher, his name is Sivar Subramani Iyer. He entered to the classroom and we used to see the radiation of knowledge from him. Radiation of knowledge from him. When he enters the classroom, my teacher, I see radiation of purity of life. And his, the way he taught, I, my dream has got shaped. What should be my way of life? He is the person, the teacher gave me the vision of my life when I was a young fellow. Now a teacher has got a fantastic opportunity to grow minds, to enrich the minds and give the dreams to the young people and nurture the dreams with them and they will become a great human being. Sometime they will become better than you, but better than the teacher. So that opportunity you have. And also, the teacher, like what I am doing, I am a professor, I can also do the research, young researchers will be work with me. That's a great pleasure when they get the PhD. We should know how to handle the, not only how to handle the success, how to handle the failures. Particularly, you are in the management environment. I want the young people to understand how to manage the failure because any task you do you have to come across problem problem should not become the captain of the individual or the project chief and uh, the project chief should become the captain of the problems and defeat the problem and succeed every action of the leader should be transparent you know what i mean every that is leader should work with integrity and succeed with integrity Leader should work with integrity and succeed with that. And uh, I, I believe President, since you asked the question, has to be continuously in touch with the people. Rashtrapati Bhavan, where uh, I, I was uh, there, became a people's Bhavan. Instead of Rashtrapati Bhavan, it becomes people's Bhavan. And also I travel into the whole state Cutting across hill, deserts and sea, I was in touch with you. So thank you guys for watching this video. For more videos, please subscribe so that you will get more videos from me. And press the bell button so that you get more notification if I upload any new videos. Thank you.